John Tanner has risen to become one of the most prolific women's water polo coaches in the history of the college game, but it all started in the pool. He was a standout swimmer and water polo player at Stanford, helping the men win three NCAA titles in water polo before coaching took hold, with stops at Menlo Atherton, Menlo School, and the University of the Pacific. In the late 80s, he joined Team USA as an assistant, helping the men to gold medals at the 91 and 97 FINA World Cups, plus appearances at the 92 and 2000 Olympic Games. While water polo was going well, swimming took off as he guided Brad Schumacher to two Olympic golds at the 96 Atlanta Games. In the late 90s, he took over the women's water polo program at Stanford, helping the squad to their first NCAA title in 2002. With all that success, the current decade has seen a new level of excellence from the Stanford women and Tanner as they've claimed five NCAA championships in the last eight years, all while sending multiple athletes to the Olympic Games. To me, it kind of seems like he started coaching me when I met him, um, back when I was a middle schooler, and I still remember he came up to me and he still does the same thing. Hello, Maggie, how are you? Gives you a pat on the back or a nice handshake. Um, and I could just tell right when I met him that this was somebody that you respect. This is somebody that is really knowledgeable and um, this is a special, special guy. For most people, you'll notice he's you know, kind hearted and very, very genuine and there for you when you need him. And I think most importantly for me, um, he's been that sounding board and um, a mentor for me as a coach growing up and as an athlete. Um, always been able to rely on him for great advice, or whether it be dealing with you know, a difficult parent or helping athletes to get onto their next level, what they need to do to prepare, or if I just had a training question um, about what he's doing, he's always been available and always had great insight as to uh, what I needed to do. I mean, he's always been more than just a water polo coach to me. Um, I remember my recruiting trip and how my whole family was involved. We gave him a tour of the city. My coach was there translating and he was always so invite, inviting, so inclusive. And I always appreciated that, especially coming to Stanford. And I think my parents really could see that their daughter was gonna be in good hands. And so I think for them, it was really like, do we? And, trust our daughter with going that far away and with that visit I think they felt that they could and I think the relationship that JT and I have had for the last 20 years is kind of indicative of that first meeting and my parents are like yeah he's been a big part of your life so that was the right choice for you. He just has a really really good feel for how to coach uh, modern student athletes how to create a culture in his program that's perfectly aligned with what Stanford is doing and what Stanford's all about. And he's a few steps ahead of, of other programs, frankly, from a cultural perspective in terms of what he's able to do to attract and coach and teach uh, modern, really intelligent student athletes. So I was training for the 2012 squad and I was definitely the little squirt on the team and um, Adam had just talked to my parents and to me about wanting me to train full time. And um, I had decided, you know, I wanted to go to the Olympics. This was my dream. I was going to do it. I remember talking with JT and him telling me, yeah, you're going to take that year off and you're going to make the Olympics. It wasn't even a question, you know, and he believed in me 100%. To hear that from him was really, really special. Most importantly, character counts. Um, he used to tell me that all the time. And we had a deal amongst ourselves if we were ever to change, or if it's more specifically after winning gold medals, if I were to change, he would always tell me. But most importantly, he always held me accountable. Uh, back in the day, I missed a practice where it was just him and I to show up uh, for some, some swim training. And I blew it off and didn't show up. And uh, he called me into his office immediately about 9 o'clock in the morning. I was supposed to be there at 6. He said, if you want me to continue to be a coach, you have to write me a check for, I don't know, $125 or something. At the time, uh, the vast majority of my bank account, I wrote him the check and never missed a practice again. So um, a small little detail, but just really hit home with me to show how important it was to you know, respect what we were doing together and the sacrifices we were making together to uh, get to the Olympic podium. Right after retiring from, from London, I moved up here to the Bay Area 
And I think I had coffee with JT once a week. And sometimes there was tears, sometimes there was, you know, happy laughter, but just being able to have a mentor in life that kind of understood me from the age of 18, it really allowed me to just kind of move past that transition from an Olympic athlete to here I am in the real working world, how do I figure this out? So I really appreciate that and I think that's just a testament to JT and really trying to connect to the athletes on his team and the connection that this program wants to continue to have after you leave. JT is a remarkable person. He's a really close friend. Uh, he's loyal. He's really intelligent. He cares a lot about the people in his life, and I'm I'm proud to uh, I'm proud to know JT.